my name's George, and um, I'm 31 years old. And just like everybody in this room, I believe I have a past that was uh, somewhat rough and rocky. <laughs> and um, all I know is uh, that I knew I had to do something with my life. I have two kids, I have a wife. I've been with my wife for 17 years. Um, I've been doing drugs since I was 11 years old. Uh, I didn't get told I was a drug addict until I was 21. Um, other than that, I've been in and out of institutions my whole life. Uh, since I was 11, I've done multiple juvenile, juvenile hall terms. Six months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, four months, three months. And uh, that was my juvenile life. Uh, what can I say? I love to do a lot of drugs as many times as I could, as much as I could. I had a problem with uh, authority. <laughs> um, I guess you could say, since my dad wasn't there, I kind of blamed it on him. But in reality, what I was trying to do was try to be like him, because he was living that life. And uh, I did, I went, uh, I went rock solid hard, turned 18. Around I turned 18 and went to prison, got out, got into drugs. All of a sudden, I'm a drug addict. I never heard it when I was in a, a, a minor. So from 21 to 29, I was in and out of rehabs, in and out, in and out. Got a sponsor, thought a sponsor was going to help me. Sponsor couldn't help me. I had to help myself. I had to be there for myself. I had to uh, go to meetings as many times as I could, and which I didn't really, you know. I just told my sponsor I did. My family was trying to help me out, putting me in rehabs. I couldn't do it. And I would go on the run. And I mean, not on the run from the cops. I went on the run from my family. I disappeared for months at a time. I'd abandon my kids. It was rough. Now that I'm sober, I can see exactly where I went wrong. Deep down inside, I knew I had to change. I knew I had to leave the, the lifestyle of thinking my homeboys were the number one thing, putting work in. I had to pretty much let them go. At 29, I got into Sovereign Hell. January 24th, uh, before I walked in, I had a syringe trying to do my last fix, and my mom's telling me, like, you got to go, you know? You got to get inside. Now, uh, I didn't do that last fix because my mom was crying when she said it, and I walked into Sovereign Health not knowing what to expect. I walked into a building kind of like this, and a bunch of doors, little carpet hallways, made me nervous, <laughs> I wanted to go back outside. They said, as soon as you walk in, you're not going back outside. Say bye to your mom, this is, this is where you're gonna start growing up and doing things on your own. Uh, <laughs> I passed out on the little couch from being up for so many days, so many months, so many years, just wrecking my body. Uh, I woke up, paperwork apparently was done already. <laughs> I went to three different houses before I finally got to my house and it was about two hours of a drive here to there to here, eating here, going back to sleep in the car. I didn't know where I was. Ended up in Hollywood. <laughs> Culver City to Hollywood, okay. And uh, right when I got there, it was cool, man. A bunch of people greeted me with open arms. They were all on the same trip as I was. If not, they had uh, other issues, which was related to me. I'm kind of out there too, you know, a little nervous, you know, got little itch to me, noodle and grooving when I was there. Um, all I could say is that when I was there for those 30 days, I just did a 30 day fix. I got in a fight after seven days. I got transferred to Palm Springs. From Palm Springs, I decided to walk home all the way to Mission Viejo, which is two cities up from here. Uh, they called me the next day saying, hey, you want to get back in? I got myself right back in and started from scratch 30 days. These 30 days, I worked on myself. I lost that attitude after those seven days when I got into that fight. I'd lost that attitude, told myself, hey, you didn't change like you said you were. 
what do I gotta do? My ego has to go. So usually they say your ego is your amigo. No, it's not. He's the guy who's gonna fight with you. He's the one who's gonna tell you, hey, you're better. You can do it. You should do this, even though it's bad for you. And the other side is the one who usually falls because I've been on that road and I'm telling you, all my life I've always fell. Fell into my ego. I'm number one, I'm the baddest. I'm, you know, I'm gonna walk these streets, I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna talk to these girls, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go to this party, I'm gonna run up in there, I'm gonna do whatever I want. And I lost that ego those last 30 days when I was there. And pretty much I was, instead of being that shy guy who sat back, I was that guy when someone came in, I greeted him. Hey, how you doing? My name's George, if you need anything, I got it. You know, don't hesitate to ask. You need help with the chore, I'll show you. You know, you, you need help like cleaning up the room, I'll show you how to do it proper so no one fights with you and argues with you. I was being a leader instead of being a follower and thinking about, oh, I need to get buff, I need to start working out, I need to do this. I just decided it was better to help someone else so I can help myself. And that helped those 30 days, I mean, my, my attitude changed, you know. I, I walk down the street and I see someone, like I don't hesitate to say hi first and greet them. Even if they don't say hi back, hi back, hey, at least I got it off my chest and I was a nice person to say hello. You know, it could help someone. It could really make someone's day. I've been told, I've had people tell me, hey, you know what, you made my day today for being so kind. And reality is uh, those 30 days, changed my ego a little bit. Now I'm just a nervous wreck. <laughs> uh, before I used to not be so nervous, I used to be that confident, smooth talker kind of guy. But uh, since I got out of Sovereign Health, my kids, since I've been out, I have not slept away from them once. I mean, I pick up my kids from school every day. I work a full-time job in the field that I went to school for back in 2007 for being a plumber. I got a nice job doing plumbing. Uh, it's my cousin's business and he didn't want to hire me before because I was that bad. But he actually uh, found out I got out of the program and called me right away and said, hey, I got a job for you. And since then, I've been doing plumbing for the past two years. And it's been awesome. I, I mean, I got a smooth schedule. I can pick up my kids. I can take my kids in the morning, pick them up, I can leave, come and go, and help my wife out cooking. I've never used to cook. Just recently, uh, about three weeks ago, I did a, I'm doing a diet just to lose weight because my wife wants to lose weight. This is something I would never do. I'm not gonna change the way I eat because you gotta change the way you eat. But all of a sudden, I'm waking up at 4.30 every morning, going to this gym and working out with her and just, I don't know, things are looking real good. After two years out of, out of Sovereign Health, like it really helped to say that I keep in contact with just a few people in my life that are doing the same thing as me. They might not be going to meetings every day and everything like that, but their family's number one now. Their, their number one priority is their recovery, but their family, close quarters, hey, how you doing, you doing good? Yeah, just hit me back up, cool, call you back in a week or so. And uh, I don't come out of my house. I don't, I don't have friends, I don't have homeboys. All I have is my family, because that's what it comes down to in the end. When you're in jail, who's the only one who takes care of you? Your family. Whether it be your husband, your brother, your sister, or your mom, or your dad. And reality is, your family, your friends ain't gonna come visit you. <laughs> I heard that all my life. Yeah, we'll come visit you if you go busted. Yeah, whatever, we lying. But um, yeah, that's, that's the truth of it. Like my wife did so much for me when I was in prison in uh, Blythe, California. She would drive 300 and something miles to come visit me every weekend. And I couldn't, I couldn't change all these years until I was 29, until I came into Sovereign Health and said, hey, I need to do something with myself. They gave me the right tools on what I need, how to sit and meditate and think before I act and you know, hold my tongue. If I really want to speak on something, I'll step outside, I'll say it out to the air, you know, and just kind of vent it out. But 
I won't be aggressive towards another person anymore. All it does is take you back to jail, <laughs> get you kicked out of programs or whatever you're trying to do in life, it ain't going to help, you know? So, oh man, <laughs> when I sit and think about it, I mean, I was a real jerk, dude, to a lot of staff members in those seven days. But when they gave me a chance and called me back, I came back, like, blessed, knowing, like, hey, because my wife wasn't going to take me back. She says, if you didn't do the program, we're done. Divorce time. You've been gone too many months. Too long you've been doing this, you know? And those 30 days, I got, I got to talk to the staff, the house managers. I soaked up what they were telling me. And I use it in my everyday life, man. Um, meditation used to be the best thing for me. I remember every day before class meditating, I'd tell myself, you know, this is what you gotta do if you wanna keep going. You gotta stay sober, you gotta lose your friends. It doesn't matter if you grew up with them since you were in first grade. They're not the ones supply, uh, supporting your family. If anything, they're the one trying to take your family away from you. Just do your own thing. Get a small group of people that are doing the same thing you're trying to do in life. Don't think about the negatives. Try to be positive. Remember, you're the one that controls your own actions. So I know today if I get mad, I could go get a beer. I'm over 21. Hey, I deserve it. That's not going to do nothing for me. So I know I have the strength. I have the willpower to say no now that I've been in a program, found a little group of people. If I feel it like ever using again, I can call them and be like, hey, what's up? Let's go get a coffee real quick, dude. I gotta get something off my chest. Vent it out. That's the best thing you can do. Keeping stuff in and bottled in, that's when you're gonna break. And I've learned that from all the times that I've tried recovering and couldn't get there. That's how I break. I never used to talk about it. I never used to speak on how I felt. All I did was just get that sponsor, talk to him. I got my first year. He told me, hey, get your next year. Boom. I just got my, my second year two months ago. And honestly, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So I got two years, two months, three days, you know. <laughs> and uh, it, it don't come easy, I'll tell you that. It don't come easy because there's up and downs. There's days I work that suck. There's times when there's no work and it's a little slow. What do you got to do? Just get out of your mind and do something right. Go help someone else out help out a family member, do something productive. My name's George. Today, I'm a great husband. I'm a great brother. I'm a great son. Uh, I'm a great coworker. I'm a positive attitude. Um, I'm a kind person to be around. What's important now is just my family. And that's all I do now is just recovery, focus, meditate, do what's right. And here I am today speaking for you guys, man. Thank you guys so much.